My name is Mark McEwen. I'm a 9th and 10th grade ENL teacher, and this video is for students who are looking for ways to improve their paragraphs. So in this video, we'll talk about three different ways you can improve your paragraphs. So first, we'll look at combining sentences, then adding transitions, and finally adding a closing sentence. So this is the paragraph we're going to use. This is the summary of the article, Should Phones Be in Schools? Uh, there's nothing wrong with this paragraph. It's perfectly fine. It follows the conventions of English. It has capital letters. It ends in the, each sentence ends in periods. It's double spaced. But there are definitely ways we can improve this paragraph. So let's first talk about conjunctions. Conjunctions can be used to combine ideas into one sentence. They're a type of word. So we're going to be using our conjunctions to help us combine sentences in our paragraph. So we're going to look at coordinating conjunctions, which are used to write compound sentences. And we're going to look at subordinating conjunctions, which we use to write complex sentences. So you'll notice for these conjunctions, there's a, a heading above each one, and these are the functions of those conjunctions. So for example, and can be used to introduce a new idea, but and yet can be used to show contrast, so can be used to show effect, and so on. So let's take a look at this paragraph again. So we're going to think about which of these sentences can be combined. So we have to think about what is the relationship between the sentences. So let's look at the second and third sentences here. The second sentence says, the school allowed students to have phones with them. The third sentence says, the parents wanted their kids to be safe when they walked home from school. So we need to ask ourselves, what is the relationship between these sentences? So the relationship between these two sentences is a causal relationship. The second sentence is the cause of the first sentence. So we can ask ourselves why in this situation. So why did the school allow students to have phones with them? Well, the cause for that is the, student, the parents wanted their kids to be safe when they walked home from school. Another example we have below. These two sentences, the school created a new survey, created a survey. It showed that most kids wanted to use phones at lunch. So the relationship between these two sentences is the second sentence is a new idea that is connected to the first sentence. It's talking more about the survey. So we go back to our conjunctions and we think about those relationships we want to show and we're going to use conjunctions that show that relationship. So here we are going to use and for that new idea relationship. And for cause, we have since, as, or because. So our combined sentences now look like this. The school allowed students to have phones with them because the parents wanted their kids to be safe when they walked home from school. And the other com combined sentences, the school created a survey and it showed that most kids wanted to use phones at lunch. Now let's talk about transitions. Transitions are words or phrases that can be used to show the relationship between sentences. So similar to our conjunctions, we have these divided by their function. So again, we have new idea and effect, contrast, some of those repeating ideas, but then some new ones as well, sequence, conclusion, so on. You notice these start with a capital and then end with a comma. That's because we are going to be using these transitions to begin our sentences, to start our sentences. So here is our paragraph again. We need to think about which pairs of sentences would be appropriate to add some of these transitions. So again, we're going to think about the relationships. So let's look at these two sentences. Not everyone agreed about the rules. The school created a survey, and it showed that most students wanted to use phones at lunch. So the second sentence here is the effect of that first sentence. And let's look at these final two sentences. The principal decided that students could use phones at lunch on Fridays. They couldn't play violent games, take photos, or listen to music without earbuds. So that final sentence are some restrictions on the content of the first sentence. So that's a contrast relationship. So we look at our transitions. We want to find one from the contrast list and also from effect. So now we have not everyone agreed about the rules. Consequently, 
The school created a survey and it showed that most kids wanted to use phones at lunch. The principal decided that phones that students could use phones at lunch on Fridays. However, they couldn't play violent games, take photos or listen to music without earbuds. Notice how the uh, first words, the former first words of these sentences, we change those to lowercase letters. So don't forget to do that when you add your transitions. Finally, let's talk about how to write a closing sentence. So to write a closing sentence, we're actually going to start with our opening sentence, our first sentence, the topic sentence. So the reason we're gonna start with the topic sentence is because that contains our central idea. And one of the possible functions of a closing sentence is to restate that central idea so it's clear to the audience. So our topic sentence was, should phones be in schools, is about a school that debated their cell phone rules. So this is gonna be a two-step process. First, we're going to change at least three keywords. So we're going to identify at least three words in the sentence that we can change. And we're gonna look for alternative words uh, to replace them. So you need to be careful with the words that you choose because you need to be sure that there are alternatives for that word. Some words are too specific and you might have a hard time thinking of a different word. It may not fit. So the three words we're gonna choose are debated, cell phone, and rules. So for debated, in our closing sentence, we're gonna use the word contested. For cell phone, we're gonna use technology. And again, this is an alternative, but it's not a synonym. And when I use technology in my closing sentence, it will be clear because I've already used the word cell phone a few times in my paragraph. So technology is okay in my closing sentence. And instead of rules, the word policy. The second step is to change the order of some words. So I'm actually just gonna choose those words uh, that I chose before. So I'm gonna change the order of debated cell phone and cell phone rules. So my closing sentence looks like this. Though the school's technology policy was contested, in the end, they compromised. So we can see that uh, debated has been changed to contested, cell phones to technology and rules to policy, and I change the order of those in the sentence so it looks like a new sentence, but we have the same central idea. So here's what it looks like in the paragraph. And then it's a good idea to add a closing transition there to show again to the audience that this is our last sentence. So here's our original paragraph. Again, not a bad paragraph, but definitely room for improvement. And here's our improved paragraph with our conjunctions, our transitions, and that closing sentence. It makes some of the information clearer to the audience, and it's just better writing. If you're looking for more ways to improve your paragraphs, you can check out strategicinquiry.com. And again, I'm Mark McEwen.